Hi everybody, I'm Jeff from Missouri Wind and Solar and this is another part of solar panels for the beginner. Now I know all of you guys that are just beginning are probably really confused about all the different types of solar panels out there and all the different voltages. So I'm going to kind of uh, explain to them. I'm not going to get really in depth. I'll just give you an idea of the difference between one over the other. What I've got right here is a 100 watt solar panel and this is a 100 watt solar panel and that is a 15 watt solar panel over there. This is a monocrystalline and that's a polycrystalline and that over there is called a thin film or amorphous solar panel. So how can you tell the difference? Well, the monocrystalline solar panels are usually black like this and they will have these little cut corners with the diamonds in here they're really easy to spot, as you can see, see the shape of it. Now, polycrystalline will always be rectangular cells. And there'll be different shades of blue. And sometimes you'll see little chips through the, the cells like that. Now, am amorphous or thin films will be just a black panel like this. And you'll see little thin wires going through it. people ask me all the time, which solar panel is better? Well, none's really better than the other. It depends on your application, where you are, what you're doing with the solar panel, you know, how much you want to spend. So, um, if you use the thin film panels, now that is a 15 watt panel, keep in mind. This is a 100 watt and this is a 100 watt. Now the monocrystallines are more efficient than the polys and more efficient than the thin film. The monocrystalline panel, 100 watt, will be smaller in size than a polycrystalline will be. Polycrystalline of the same wattage will be bigger. Now, the thin film amorphous of the same wattage, if it was 100 watt, will be even bigger, quite a bit bigger, than a polycrystalline or a monocrystalline. So room is a factor. Say if you're doing a roof or something, and room is a factor for you, you don't have much room, you definitely wouldn't want to go with thin film. You'd want to go with polycrystalline or monocrystalline. Mono will take up the least amount of room. Now, here's another difference between these panels. Monocrystalline is really great for low light conditions over polycrystalline. And by low light I mean say if you live in the northern states or if you live in Canada um, where the where it's overcast quite a bit and lower light or up in Alaska then monocrystalline would be what you would want to use. They are more efficient, they work much better in low light conditions than poly does or Marcus. Which solar panel costs more? Well if we're talking about 100 watts, 100 watts, 100 watts monocrystalline will cost the most. Polycrystalline will be cheaper than mono and amorphous or thin fil film will be the cheapest of all. Now why is that? Well the monocrystallines just simply cost more to manufacture. The cells are more even and this is a much more efficient panel than the polycrystalline and, and it takes more time to do the monocrystalline than it does to do a poly. Well, there's nothing wrong with the polys, but the way these are manufactured, it's just simply cheaper to manufacture than the monocrystalline is. Now the amorphous or thin film, this is absolutely the cheapest to manufacture uh, there is. Now monocrystallines are 10% more efficient over polys. Now that number changes a little bit. We have to also keep in mind manufacture. Now we're talking about if these were all the same manufacturer, all high quality panels, this could be 10% more efficient and actually this monocrystalline can put out four times as much power over the same size in a thin film amorphous. Now, if you're concerned about aesthetics on your roof and you want uniform color in your solar panels, say on your roof, 
monocrystalline would be what you would use. There are color differences in polycrystalline, and they're not as uniform in color at all. Now, the, the thin film amorphous, those are usually the same color. They got a pretty uniform color. So if statics is an important factor to you, you'd want to use monos. Economy is an important factor to you. Use the thin film amorphous. That's where you'd want to go. Um, efficiency of each one of these panels. Now, this number will vary also, you know, with, with the manufacturers. But the mono's efficiency is 15 to 20 percent. Poly, 13 to 16 percent. And the thin film, amorphous, is 7 to 13 percent efficient. So there's your efficiency. Life expectancy, what do you expect to get out of solar panels? Well, the monos really don't last uh, any longer than the polys. They might last a little bit longer. But now the polys have caught up and they last pretty much the same amount of time as the monocrystallines do. Now the amorphous or thin film, those are the worst. They will live the least amount of time. So their life can be short. Um, 25 years on the mono, 25 years is what people are giving on the uh, uh, polycrystalline, and I'm not sure in the years anybody gives on the, the thin films. So basically what that means is at the end of 25 years, um, the numbers go up and down a little bit, but they can lose 30% uh, of their efficiency, 10 to 30% of their efficiency. See, those numbers are all over the place. Everybody has their own opinion on that, so I'm just going to go on some of the different articles that I've read. Now, how long do they last? Well, they say the solar panels can last up to 75 years. Um, so I don't know, and that's just what they say. Of course, they've got to be around 75 years for us to find out, but 50 years, I guess, is supposed to be the life expectancy of a solar panel, and do they go dead at the end of 50 years? That I don't know on, on that question. Now, there are solar panels that were made back in the 1970s, and I've seen a few of them, and even the 1980s. And those guys said their power output today was down 50%, half of what it was. So out of a 100-watt solar panel uh, from the 70s, 80s, uh, they're getting 50 watts out of them today. So that's all I can tell you on their length, their longevity. Uh, for most residential use, okay, you're, just a, you're just a homeowner, uh, most residential uses, um, those people really get polycrystalline. And for the people uh, that are really interested in, I mean, the highest efficiency and uniform color, you'll see a lot of this stuff on government buildings and states and that sort of thing, they get monocrystalline. Um, now, the thin film, uh, am, am, Amorphous solar panel. I have to show you something here. Okay, give you an idea of the size difference. This is a 15 watt, this is part of a 45 watt Harbor Freight solar panel kit. I know you guys have seen them, they come with three panels like this. This is a, this is a 15 watt thin film Amaphorus panel. This is a Harbor Freight panel. Now you can see the size different up against a 100 watt poly. Okay, so there's quite a bit of size difference here. Now, a lot of people run to Harbor Freight, uh, they get shot coupons, and they think, what a great deal Harbor Freight solar panels go, oh, because they get all these cool lights and the little charge controller and stuff. It is a horrible deal, absolutely horrible deal, to mess with getting a Harbor Freight solar panel kit. And let me tell you why. I was just at Harbor Freight myself, and this is November of 2015. The 45 watt solar panel kit from Harbor Freight, 45 watt, was $189 here in Springfield, Missouri. They'll shoot you out a coupon for 150 bucks. It varies up and down, depends on where you live. So now you're talking about, with a coupon, $150 for 45 watts. A 100 watt solar panel will cost you 120 
to $130 for 100 watt. Okay? So you're, you're getting twice the wattage and a long-lasting solar panel for the same money. When that's a lot. So the other problem these Harbor Freight solar panels have is the charge controller that comes with them is usually only for 45 watts, okay? So that little cheapy charge controller that comes with them, 45 watts. You can't, you can't upgrade those at all. And uh, the problem that Harbor Freight has always had, unless they have changed it, is the wiring on the back of their solar panels is too small and it has always choked the power out of the Harbor Freight panels. So, typically uh, what people have done and what you can even do yourself if you do have a Harbor Freight kit is take this wire out of there and it's usually like a uh, 16 gauge wire or even 18 gauge sometimes wire that's out of the back of these. You can take this panel off and replace the cable that's on your Harbor Freight panels with a 12 gauge wire and you'll see an amperage increase out of that 45 uh, watt panel kit. So my suggestion is do not buy the Harbor Freight solar panel kit unless that's something you want for camping or whatever because dollar for watt it is a horrible value. We'll go to $189, typical price, $189 for 45 watts or 130 bucks for 100 watts. These panels will last you 25 years, these will not. I've seen a lot of these burn out two to five years burned out. It is a bad value. And I've seen other people that have promoted these a long time ago when they first came out. Later on, they were sorry they did it. Okay, so we have 130 watts for a 100 watt panel. You said, yeah, but it doesn't come with a charge controller. Well, for 10 or 20 bucks, you can buy a 10 amp charge controller for a 100 watt panel. And a 100 watt panel puts out 5 amps, you know, 5 point something amps. So pretty much you can get even a 20 amp little cheap charge controller uh, for 20 bucks. 20 amp, all right? So you can put three to four of these 100 watt panels on it. But anyway, 130 for a, a poly panel under water, 10 to 20 bucks for the charge controller. Now you have 140 or 50 dollars into the solar panel and charge controller. Compare that with 189 dollars. If you get the coupon and they sell it to you for 130, 150, it's still a horrible deal. It is not a good deal at all. So stay away from the Harbor Freight 45 watt solar panel kit. Um, we're back to the panels. Um, what I mean by a 12 volt solar panel is these aren't actually 12 volt, they're meant for 12 volt battery charging and when you flip them around the actual voltage is like 21 volts on them. And that's meant for charging a 12 volt battery. Um, well I think that's it for now, I don't want to go any further into this except for one more thing. People always ask me, do I need diodes for my panel? These solar panels come with diodes, no they're already built in, you don't need them. Now these panels don't need diodes. And the diodes are in this junction box here. And this is what's called MC4 connectors. That's what a pair of MC4 connectors looks like. Okay, I've already showed this in another video, but I'll do it again. And you see down here, this one, the female is negative, and on this one, the male is positive. Now all the ratings will be on the back of a solar panel. Anyway, this is a typical 100 watt solar panel in the rating. 22 volts, five and a half amps is what it's actually gonna put out when you hook it up to a battery. So this is what it looks like. 12 volt battery charging. Wire a couple of these in series together and you can charge 24 volt batteries. Well, that's it for now. Uh, everybody. So this was Solar Panels for the Beginner, and I'm Jeff from Missouri Wind and Solar. And until next time, I'll see you later.